Um, so we've talked about why we do colposcopy, what we're looking for, and we've talked about all of this already, the normal epithelium, the CIN1 with the disease in the lower part of the portion of the epithelium, CIN2 with the disease in the upper and the middle to upper third, to, uh, to two thirds of the epithelium and CN3 all the way through, and then cancer. So, and we also have talked about, and you've seen this table before from uh, McCready with, um, sorry, from uh, 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 Andrew Oster, with the resolution of low grade changes, which can actually be better than that in the younger women, and the persistence and some resolution of high grade changes, and the data from uh, New Zealand where they saw progression to cancer in 31% of cases. So it's important for us colposcopically to identify high-grade findings. Patients come to colposcopy because they have abnormal pap tests, and this would be an ASCA smear and an, an LCIL smear with the uh, uh, slightly larger nucleus, but some, uh, um, some cholecystic change around. When I looked at it in, in our institution, um, we uh, uh, looked at, uh, ask us, we, ha we have to have two abnormal smears to get into colposcopy. And when we looked at them overall, uh, whether it was ask us, ask us, ask us, LCIL, LCIL, ask us, LCIL, LCIL, they all had HPV hybrid capture 2. So that means they had one of the high risk types, 16, 18, 31, 33, 45, etc., about 12 types, um, in about 70% on average, and there was no difference statistically with any of these groups. There also wasn't much difference when we looked at this and whether rates of high-grade dysplasia. So when you look at a, a referral from a low-grade change, you have to be aware that there may be high-grade histology on a low-grade cytology referral. Um, in the ALTS trial, which is the big trial done in the US, um, they saw CIN2 or 3 in 13% of women that were referred in for evaluation of a low-grade smear. And in my group, when they actually had two PAP tests, it was about 22%. An ASK-H PAP test, which is slightly higher risk, which is, as you can see here, a slightly smaller nuclei. They come from the basal layers we learned yesterday, and the bigger nucleus. Um, but it's not as dense a nucleus as you'll see with a high-grade change. Um, they have significant pathology in, in about 70% of the time, and they have some AIS, and they do have about 2.9% of invasive cancer in some reviews. HCL PAP test you can see here, with the even denser nuclei, the lesser amount of cytoplasm, um, and so occasionally mitotic figures. Um, they uh, often will have high-grade disease there, and if you do leap straight away, you'll actually find up to 90% of abnormalities. AGC cytology has a whole range of abnormalities you, um, from a CIN1 to CIN2 to 3 to AIS to cancer and endometrial pathology. Hence, with an AGC in the older woman, you need to do a uh, endometrial biopsy. And there's the difference between the AGC NOS and the AGC N in the rate of uh, high grade lesions, which can be up to 96% with the AGC N. And that was the algorithms for those. So when you do colposcopy, you examine the whole lower genital tract. Use acetic acid liberally. Be aware of the small lesion. Um, in a highly screened population, you'll find small lesions, and they can be difficult to identify. Um, uh, take biopsies liberally. Um, use ECC when appropriate, and do ECC with unsatisfactory colposcopy or a transformation zone when you can't see it. So some of the features that we see now, can you see that okay? Do I need to turn the lights down? Is that okay? It's okay? It's good. Okay. Pardon? With the lights up or down here? Yeah, can we just press? I think they're coming down. They're coming down. So this is a lady referred with high-grade findings. And this is after applying acetic acid. And you can see... The squamous column junction here, the original one was probably a little bit out here because of some glands here. So this is the current squamous column junction. Over the glandular epithelium within that, you can see dense C to white changes, and some of this is off-white, and some of this is white here, snow white. And there's some punctation and abnormal vessels in it, but that is definitely an abnormal epithelium that is quite medial on the cervix, so you can see that there. 
and that would be biopsied, and that was biopsied and showed high-grade dysplasia. Um, she, and she had some other abnormalities there. I think she actually had associated AIS in association with this. This is one of those groups of women that had AIS. And that AIS was probably in, in here somewhere. Low-grade findings, uh, the acetylwhite change is slower on onset, and there's a little bit of, um, it tends to be more peripheral on the cervix, so it's outside the squamaculum junction, not coming in to over the glands. Um, it's more transient than high-grade changes, and it's, it has a, um, the snow white and the gray white t tend to be higher grade, and this it, translucent area tends to be lower grade findings. And the mosaicism you see within this is very fine. I don't know if you can see a little bit of mosaicism in here, uh, but that's a very fine change, and it's further out on the cervix, and that tends to be a lower grade finding. Again, this is low grade findings, and the color isn't as distinct. This is a young lady, um, 18, probably 19, I think, and she had um, an ASC H pap test. And you've got this area here that's translucent. It's not really dense aceto white. It has some vascular pattern in it, but it's not, could potentially be called coarse, but it's not as coarse as some of them. Um, and it has a geographic border. You see this border here? It looks like the border of a country um, that you can see here. I have one from Mario in a minute. Um, the size and the lesions, we talked about this is a low risk HPV finding. And you can see this lesion here is not central, it's peripheral. And you can see the border here, and it's got a little bit of faint mosaicism within it, and it's very translucent in its uh, C to white pattern. That would be a low grade finding. This again is a low grade finding. The, this is fairly large and it encompasses four quadrants. It has punctate lesions that are peripheral and satellite lesions, and it's outside the new squamous columnar junction here. It's more peripheral, um, and it's low grade, his, uh, low grade in its color. It's not intense acetyl white, so that would be a low grade finding. Sometimes you will find low grade findings peripherally, and this is the bottom of a cervix. Um, acetic, acetic acid has been applied, and we can see that we have, uh, we have the Alps here, and then we have Italy here, and the boot and Sicily over here. Uh, there's, Sardinia is missing, but it's a pretty good finding of what you see. You have to be careful when you see these findings, because what that actually was, was part of this bigger lesion, and there was, once you get into northern Europe, you're having a problem, and uh, there is some high-grade finding here, but the peripheral lesion was a low-grade finding, and was very geographic in its, in its appearance. So, uh, um, not every time you, get a, you see geography is it going to be a low-grade finding, you can actually get things inside that. These are all, remember, these are all after applying acetic acid. Um, the margins um, can be geographic, can be low grade, and this again is be a peripheral lesion, would have a, a, a not a very sharp margin. Um, and the low grade can be this color. This is very faint aceto white all over the cervix, and it's got all this little uh, faint mosaicism within it. And somebody asked me about uh, metaplasia, and, and this is probably some metaplasia happening here. You can almost see tongues of epithelium growing over the glandular changes here, and there should be um, some metaplastic type change here. But this was all low-grade finding or, or indistinct uh, findings with this. Um, iodine staining can be helpful to delineate what is there, and you'll see a difference between the glycogenated epithelium, which would be this brown on the outside, and sometimes the HPV effect, which will be this change. It's very indis in, um, imprecise. It doesn't tell you exactly what's going on. It's not as good as acetic acid for delineating high-grade and low-grade findings, and isn't as reproducible. Um, for example, this cervix here, um, this is with uh, uh, acetic acid, and there wasn't much to be seen. But then you put Lugol's iodine on, and you can see this appearance here. Um, but it doesn't, wasn't a yellow uptake, and that was probably uh, squamous hyperplasia or benign finding on that cervix. Again, this is that condyloma that we saw in the last presentation. Um, the, the condyloma here with villi that often are fused at the base, um, and didn't see much here, 
the Lugos ID actually picked up this area here. And we actually did have an area of CIN within this. So this was low grade findings here, and there was a higher risk HPV in this area here that had some high risk, uh, had some CIN two or three within it. Again, this is post-treatment, and post-treatment you can get non-specific findings with Lugol's iodine, and you get these patchy areas of uh, pore uptake, and you can see it here. And they don't mean anything, but they're just patchy pore uptake areas. They're not associated with any dysplasia. And this is the canal here. So when we're looking for high-grade features, and we're looking for one of the... the uh, Big signs is mosaicism, and it's coarse mosaicism. And defining coarse and fine mosaicism can be difficult. But generally speaking, you're going to have tiles that have big vessels within them. And you might have punctation within the tiles. And you can see on this cervix here, this is the cervix. These, these two are the same cervix here. You've got glandular epithelium in the middle here. You've got the squamous column junction here. And then just inside, you have some acetal white there. And there's... Suggestion of mosaicism, then you can see a little bit more here, and there's also some here. This is a bit of a better example of mosaicism, the coarseness of it, and you can see that the, the, uh, there's acetal white here, and there's some mosaic tiles, and then within the tiles there's little punctation within them here. This is a slide that was given to me by uh, one of my colleagues in Toronto, and you've got very dense acetal white changes. You've got this coarse mosaic pattern, and you almost can see here, if you look carefully, you can see happy faces. Um, and happy faces are not a good sign. It, what I mean by happy faces is like this tile here. See that? It's got a circle. It's got two eyes. And it's got a mouth. There's another smiley face here. There's a circle, an eye, and a mouth. And here's half a happy face here who's winking at us. Okay, happy faces are not a good sign. And if you see happy faces, that means there's coarse mosaicism and there's punctation within the mosaicism, and that's a sign that there is a, a higher grade finding there. And I would be a little bit concerned that there might be microinvasive disease when you get that sort of picture there. I don't think there was in this case. Um, low grade uh, findings would be look like this, and this is the one we looked at a minute ago. And you've got ill-defined areas of punctation and mosaicism, and the if you go on too high a power, you might overcall them as being high-grade findings. But this, again, would be a low-grade finding here. And the CETA white change is not as high. It can be difficult to differentiate low-grade and high-grade findings. There are a couple of signs that we brought in with the new nomenclature, um, one of which was in an inner border sign. And this was a patient that was referred with a high-grade... Uh, sorry, no, this is just looking at vessels and the high-grade findings here. There's coarse mosaicism here and a finer mosaicism here, and we'll get to the inner border in a minute. And the vessels here are a little bit more coarse and almost brain-like in this feature here. You can see irregular vessels and you can see punctation. And this cervix here, you can see that the normal epithelium on the outside, and you, this is initially after applying acetic acid here, you've got this dense acetal white change here, and the glands picked up a little bit of acetal white. Then as you let the glands revert to normal, you can see that the punctation starts to show on this area here. You see all those little vessels that are coming up, like little loops, capillary loops, and they're coming up through the skin, and they're showing. You can almost see how they're all starting to join together, circle round, and make mosaic tiles there. And that's how it sort of happens. You get these little loops, and then the, all the vessels join together, and then you get the mosaic pattern. This actually was CIN2 in this young lady here. We took a biopsy of this area here and got CIN2. On this side here, you see the regular vessels. And this was a lady that came with an abnormal glandular pap test, but she had an obvious lesion on the cervix. This is the normal cervix at the back here. And there's a raised area here that is difficult to appreciate on a two-dimensional photograph. Colposcopy gives you the three dimensions, and you can see that a lot easier. And you had an abnormal area that was going from here to over here, so it's about four centimeters on the cervix. And in the middle here, you can see how it's degenerated away, and the cervical canal has started to open up as, the ca as a cancer infiltrates into this area here. So we put acetic acid on, and we got dense acetic white change over this area here. And within that, can you see these little threads here? 
little vessels. It's not that magnified in this view. But you can see abnormal vessels everywhere. And these are hairpin vessels or things like waist thread, a hairpin like you put in your hair, or waist thread like when you're tying a piece of silk and you throw the piece on the floor and you get these little wispy threads. Um, this is the sort of vessels you will get. This lady had a squamous cell cancer of the cervix and uh, was treated with a radical hysterectomy eight or nine years ago and was discharged subsequently. It was a big lesion, but she had negative nodes and did very well and didn't require radiation. One of the indistinct things that we've, uh, you can see that um, isn't reproducible for high-grade dysplasia is thick keratosis, but you can sometimes look at the cervix and you'll see a white patch on it. There is an association with finding abnormalities underneath them, and they probably should be biopsied. This is before you apply acetic acid, uh, but it isn't that often that there is abnormalities underneath them, but that would be thick keratosis on the front lip of this cervix here. You can get different HPV infections on the same cervix. And so you can get uh, lesions within a lesion. So you've got this cervix here. Um, this would probably be a type 2 uh, transformation zone because we can't see in the canal adequately without some manipulation. I probably need to put an endocervical speculum and open up and see if I can see the upper margin of this area here. If we focus on this area here, we can see that there is slightly lighter colored acetyl white change here with fine vessels in it and that would be fine mosaicism then it changes and there's an inner border here and it becomes more coarse in its pattern and there's more redness to it but that's mosaicism and then it changes again and it becomes a more dense white uh, acetic acid so there's sort of like this three separate zones on this area here and we took a biopsy from this area here and got high grade findings so that would be a high-grade finding on the cervix. That patient was treated with a leap. Um, it's a big lesion, and I'm not sure whether I had to take two passes at that, one side to side, to get the whole area, but she was treated and uh, did well uh, post-treatment. One of the other new signs that we've talked about in the new terminology is, is the ridge sign. You can see that this patient has, this is a close-up of the cervix. She has the squamous column junction here. And there's an acetoite area here, and I would call this a type 2 transformation zone based on the fact that I knew I've stuck an endocervical speculum in and I've opened up and I've seen the upper margin of it. And so just doing that, I was able to see over the top here an upper margin. What you can see is that there's normal glands on the front. Uh, ignore this sort of area here where there's a bit of blood, but got this ridge of tissue here. It's got a dense acetylwhite, quite thick looking. It's over a mound of glands, and it's fused the glands together, and it's like a ridge of tissue. There's also a little bit of abnormal vessel here and some punctation here, but that would be a ridge sign, which is a sign of high-grade dysplasia, and reported in a couple of papers and included in the new terminology. Sharp borders are also a concern, um, and this is a a cervix that was difficult to examine, difficult to photograph because I needed to manipulate the whole area. Um, and you can see there's an area on the front lip here. And I, again, I can't show you on a still photograph that I can see the upper margin, but I would have used an endocervical speculum to open up and to see whether I could see up the canal and make sure that I was okay. And I can reassure you that the, the glandular epithelium starts just underneath there or appears to start to me. Um, you've got this area here that's quite dense acetyl white on the back and there's some punctation in, the, in this area here and it's not well defined where this stops but it probably stops just there. So you put acetic acid, sorry, put Lugol's iodine on and you get good normal uptake of Lugol's iodine with the dense mahogany colour here. You get some little areas that correspond to areas like this which are these little patterns of almost showing some mosaicism with the Lugos iodine, but then you have poor Lugos iodine uptake here, and you get a sharp inner border. Sometimes you'll get these borders and you'll touch, put a Q-tip on them, and they'll almost peel. It's like they've got CI, full thickness dysplasia, and it just peels off the epithelium, and that would be a sign of a high-grade finding. So that would be a, a sharp border sign there. This is another 
patient not showing up very well, um, slightly out of focus with high-grade displays over a large area of the cervix, um, and a big ectopy on the back here, with some abnormalities there. And this is the, Lugol's eye, uh, the green filter that shows you the vessels better. The green filter allows you to see vessels better and sometimes can help you with the uh, pattern of, of it. This was obviously, I was about to treat this lady because I've got one of these. You often need to have speculums that have ways of allowing you to expose the cervix better, particularly in a gravid patient. Um, so somebody's had, I've seen patients here that have had 10 children, um, and if you've got displays on those cervixes, it can be sometimes difficult to get the cervix in view, and you can get those speculums that have front and back uh, uh, blades, and you can get sidewall retractors, and you can see the sidewall retractor here holding the sides of the vagina out of the way so that I could treat that safely. And this is a leap speculum because it's got the coated, coated, a blue coating on it. This was a lady who had had a uh, dysplasia that was detected in pregnancy, and never came for treatment and I think she went through three pregnancies with an abnormal pap test and would never come back between pregnancy for treatment and eventually she came during pregnancy to see, to see one of my colleagues and was referred on to me and when I colposcoped her at this is probably about 28, 29 weeks you could see an area on the cervix that was four quadrants and very large and you can see this density to white change here, which corresponds to this area here. There was an area on the front. Um, it was very irregular. It bled a little bit when you touch it. And I had sort of, I couldn't see the upper margins very well at all because of the difficulty with pregnancy. So this is one of those few times when I actually took a biopsy during pregnancy to make sure I wasn't got microinvasive disease there. She didn't have any. And I actually followed her and made sure she came back to see me um, two months postpartum and we just booked her for a treatment at that time. I didn't read colposcope, we just booked her for treatment and I actually did this in the office and removed this with two, one pass on one side and the other pass on the other side and she's been fine since and hasn't had any problems. But that even, that's a very large lesion that was, was actually probably a type 2 transformation zone when we got it all, uh, all out but at this stage it would be almost a, a type 3 because I can't convincingly see it but when she came back post-pregnancy I could see the upper margin to my uh, um, satisfaction. There are some mimics of, H of CIN1, and this is a patient who was exposed to DES uh, many, many years ago. I don't have many of those in my practice. And you can see the punctation here in the upper vagina on the cervix area. Um, again, that's, I don't know if that's been commonly used in, in, in the Arabic world um, in the past, but these patients would be in their late 40s or 50s now. And that's just a picture of histology of the, of the lesions. So these are the, uh, just the algorithms similar to what we had before. And uh, this is a patient that uh, shows up better on your screen than it does on mine, I think. Um, and this was looking at the posterior lip of the cervix. And uh, she has some areas here, a dentist white area here and a bit of mucus in here, but we had a biopsy that showed CIN3, and she again had AIS on the final LEAP specimen. So there's a lot of those patients around that have big lesions that end up with uh, CIN3 and AIS on this final specimen. Uh, so back to the first one we saw there, and uh, just two or three last ones. This is an, a young patient, and you've got the ectopy here, and you can see how you've got metaplasia that grows in as the, gland, as the squamous tissue comes and grows in over that normal metaplasia. And then if you get HPV that acts on that metaplastic tissue there, you will get some infections like this. And she had CIN1 on that biopsy there. That looks fairly bright to see to white and can look similar to this one. But this is a 20-year-old who had a higher grade pap test and you can see, you can see the whole squamous columnar junction around here. It's adequate colposcopy, and she's got an acetal-white area here. So this will be a type one transformation zone. But this is slightly denser than this one. And when we took a biopsy of this area here, it came back as CIN2. This lady here, CIN1, we would treat that as a 
transient normal exposure to HPV causing a productive viral infection on the cervix and I would discharge her back for a pap test in a year's time. This lady here was CIN2, take a biopsy to make sure it wasn't higher grade findings and I would follow her in colposcopy clinic to see whether it resolved and I think she did indeed resolve after being followed for a couple of visits and then she goes back to a family doctor for regular screening. So in the younger patient some of these CIN2 lesions will go away on their own, um, and, sh and this one did. You can see it's a small lesion, and you will remove a lot of it with, with the treatment, uh, with the biopsy. Um, so in conclusion, you can usually identify um, CAN2, uh, boiling both in high grade, and you can identify the uh, CAN2 and 3 after high grade and low grade cytology. Um, they are recognized precancerous, pre, pre, uh, recognized cervical cancer precursors, and CN1 doesn't warrant therapy. These colposcopic features that you can practice and practice and practice, um, and when you do colposcopy, you have a biopsy, you have your impression, what you think it is, and you need to record that. You need to draw a picture of it. You then get back the biopsy reports a few weeks later or a week later and you can put the two together. You can then play that game in your own head. Did I recognize what was there? Was I doing a good job of it? And you constantly do that all the time and you make it so that you actually, so you're relying on your pathologist and your relationship with your pathologist to give you your own quality assurance and so that you can actually diagnose high grade lesions uh, better because you'll have, and I think in, in, in this part of the world you'll get a lot of your referrals will come through HPV and then they might have a low grade lesion or HPV and, and a high grade lesion uh, and you have to sort out really what is there and you have to look at your colposcopy appearance to see where to take a biopsy and then know who to treat and to follow a, a reasonable algorithm to avoid doing harm. Thank you very much.